Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.1 and Razbam Simulations M2000C Mirage Module. Welcome to bonus video number 4, the MIP Data Cartridge. This is a feature I actually didn't know anything about until a VAF member called Fumes pointed out to me. It's one of the few aircraft in DCS to actually have a nicely modelled data cartridge system. Uh, Vigan, Super Tucano, uh, and some other ones being other examples of this. Uh, oh, Jeff, of course, being a very, very nicely modelled one. So, uh, the data cartridge system, it's uh, allowing you basically to load butts and bads. Uh, now, as per the manual, the, uh, the butts are waypoints and bads are waypoint offsets. So those are the two systems that you can load. You can put 10 of these into the cartridge and they will either overwrite um, uh, waypoints 11 to 20 in the aircraft or alternatively, if you number yours 11 to 20, they will actually override waypoints 1 to 20 uh, in, the, in the aircraft system. So just be aware that that's, that's how the system is working. Normally you're going to want to number them 1 to 10 inside the cartridge because then they'll actually be offset to 11 to 20 and the 1 to 10 waypoints will actually be the ones that have been created in the mission editor or as part of the mission. It allows you to have a little bit of both. You can effectively have administrative points and then mission specific points. This is of course perfect for multiplayer. So, how do you make these files in the first instance? If you're in your DCS World folder, your main installation folder, and you go into Mods, Aircraft, and then M2000C down here, if you go into your Documentation folder, you'll see that this includes an example DTC. So, if we go ahead and open that up, um, actually, I don't have the right thing associated. Oops. Let's uh, actually open it with Notepad++. Here we go. So this is the example file, and this mostly tells you how to make these. As I said, you can only make waypoints and waypoint offsets. Uh, the offsets are actually included in the same line as the waypoint. There's a bunch of these parameters that you can enter. They're probably going to seem somewhat nonsensical, but if you look at the manual, the manual has a section about the data cartridge, and it explains what these are. You can enter lat long, altitude, CP is the the parameter for runway true heading, PD for the approach glide slope, TD for desired arrival time, RD for arrival track, and then you have the delta of your lat and long for making an offset, and the delta of the altitude for the, the offset. Uh, and then it describes how to load those. If I jump back into uh, the example DTC, you'll see that this one actually has uh, an example here of uh, an offset. It's a little bit complex, but I, I recommend taking a look at that. So I've got this example one. I've also got one that was created by Fumes uh, for VAF usage on the Syria map, uh, and it has named waypoints for you know standard airfields that we use, uh, and nicely he's included uh, the approach heading and the glide slope. This means that we will get uh, the artificial runway overlay on the HUD, which is very, very nice. So let's jump into the aircraft and I'll demonstrate how these are loaded. Okay, so now you join me in the cockpit and I'll go over the procedure for actually making use of the MIP when you're inside the aircraft. Uh, MIP, by the way, standing for Module Deinsertion de Parameters. Parameters, something like that. Uh, but basically the, the French form of, you know, module that contains parameters. Uh, so data cartridge. Uh, so uh, we have booted up the aircraft, so it, it, I'm basically, uh, I had a cold start, I've turned on the battery, I've connected ground power, because you need either ground power or the generator to operate the INS, and I've turned on the HUD. And apart from that, I've done basically nothing. Well, I've also aligned the INS, so the, the system is ready to use. You don't actually have to align the INS in order to load the MIP, however, the INS needs to be powered, and it can only be powered by a running engine, the generator, uh, or the ground power. So if we go ahead and open up our kneeboard just now, and we page a couple across, uh, we're going to see that we have the current waypoints that we have right now. Now, uh, 1 to 10, by default, are coming from the mission file. These, in the real aircraft, these would be loaded into the memory of the INS. These are effectively permanent. Um, well, you know, they're loaded by the ground crew, so as far as the pilot is concerned, they're permanent. We have um, 
you know, we could edit these, but when we power on the aircraft, they're going to be, you know, as they were set by the ground crew. And uh, I can go ahead and flip through these. In this mission, I have five uh, waypoints. You can see in the HUD, waypoint one, 5.2 nautical miles away, uh, and the, the needles are dri driving normally. I can flip to two, three, four, five, and a waypoint six is blank. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten are all blank. In this particular mission, they're not used. I can now go ahead and load my MIP. My MIP contains 10 waypoints. They will appear um, on the 11 to 20 section. And we can do this by looking down at the control panel here. And we have this MIP data cartridge slot in between these two uh, mode selector uh, switches for the INS system. So not on the PCN, further aft on the right console. I can right click on this slot and then I will have a data cartridge just hanging in the air here and I can choose which one I want. Test is actually the one that I copied from the documentation folder. This is the example one. If I roll my mouse wheel over it though, I can go to the one that uh, fumes very nicely created for us, labeled VAF Cypress. So yeah, mouse wheel to flip between these. Uh, it's very cool the way they're labelled like this. I can then left click to position it over the slot and I'm just going to move my camera so we can also see the PCN because if I left click on the cartridge again it will be inserted and you'll see MIP light is now lit. This is the cartridge loading. It actually loads the moment you insert it. It can take up to 15 seconds and if it loads correctly the light will simply go out. So let's wait for that. If there is an error, oh there we go, it finished, light has gone out, and you'll note that my kneeboard was immediately updated. Um, if there is any error in loading the cartridge, like uh, your your file is, is um, uh, erroneous, you'll get a flashing MIP light on the PCN. But in our case, it worked correctly. And if we wait a while, it actually takes the cartridge out for you. If you wanted to manually do it, you would right click on the cartridge to bring it up in the air again, right click it again to pull it out, and then you could left click on the, the flap to actually close the flap. So that's right click to open, left click to close. Uh, but that process has all been done for us. So you can now see that these points have been loaded into waypoints or butt numbers 11 to 20. If I go back up and look forwards, I can now cycle through these. Uh, if I go to 11, there we go, it has a distance and a heading. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 20, and these are all now uh, working correctly. So isn't that good? And you can see uh, the, the offset will be illuminated for the ones that have offsets. Uh, let me see if I can remember one that actually had an offset. Um, I can't remember which ones actually had offsets right now. In any case, uh, th this is all functioning normally, which is good. So that's the entire process for loading them. Now, something to note, you can actually add data cartridges into the folder while you're um, in-game. They are only updated, however, whenever you rearm or repair. Uh, and it, oh, one thing that I didn't actually cover, the folder that you need to put these into is a folder called Data Cartridges, with a capital D, inside the DCS folder in your saved games. Uh, so if we actually flip back to my, my monitor here, you can see here, if I go into my saved games and I go into DCS, uh, it's a folder called Data Cartridges. You actually need to make this folder. It's not present by default. Capital D, Data Cartridges, and you can see my example and the VAF Cypress one. So that is the entire procedure for loading these MIP Data Cartridges. So, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option of further supporting the channel by joining Deep Hack's Ground Crew. Thank you very much to those of you who've already done so. Your names are appearing on the screen now. There's some small benefits, such as being part of the Deep Hack's Ground Crew Discord, and occasionally we do flights together as well. So, uh, please consider doing that uh, if you would like to. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.